Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Murdo Todd. I am delighted to be joined by Ban- Octagon Bantamweight Champion Jonas Magard. How are you, my friend? I'm very, very well, thank you. I just finished off a two hours little massage, uh, massage after the session, so I'm feeling good. Nice. You're, we're, re- really, uh, we're really not too far away. July 28th, you'll be defending your title. Uh, how are you feeling? You ready to go now? I'm so ready to go. I was ready to go a month ago, so I'm even more ready now. Yeah. Pretty quick turnaround from your last uh, your last outing. Did you have much downtime or were you straight back into the gym? I had a couple of weeks chilling, enjoying my family, and then I got the itch and I wanted to fight as soon as possible. I was out for a long time before my last fight um, and I want to stay active. So I was I was on Octagon's case. Give me a fight. Pretty straight on. So, yeah. Your opponent, Felipe Lima. Listen, I know you guys have been going back and forth. If you can, can you tell me something that he does well that uh, that maybe is a threat to you? Mm, what he does well is he, he. I think he got that young fighting spirit in him, and yeah, he, he he's a good striker, and and yeah, I think he's gonna be a good dance partner for me. Can you tell me a little bit of the history between you two? Yeah, there is not really any history. I just think like he he he's he 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 fights in Scandinavia and I'm fighting in Scandinavia too. And we both wanted that number one in Scandinavia thing and we were scheduled to fight before. Um and uh, this contract was almost signed and but then I got the better offer from Octagon. So where there was better money and better show, uh, instead of fighting in a local show, and I don't know if he got a bit took that personal or, or what it was but uh, yeah that's about it uh, what, can you give me a prediction uh, for next weekend's fight for next weekend's fight or the yeah. next next fight no, no, sorry yeah for, for your fight against Lima sorry a prediction I think it's gonna be I don't like to make specific predictions but I think it's gonna be a, a exciting fight it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna put me on the map once again i'm gonna showcase my skills uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a banger that that's my prediction listen i know you like to talk um is that something that you enjoy do you almost kind of need that to to get a bit fired up for your training or what is it like no i'm just it's just me how i am i, I just say what i see and say what i i feel uh, it's not that to hype myself up or anything. It's just, it's just who I am uh, as a fighter, as a person. Uh, if I see something, I say it. If there's something on my mind, good or bad, I will, I will tell you. I will tell you how I feel about everything. So yeah, that's about it. It it's not like something I'm like planning. Oh, I'm gonna say this, and oh, I'm gonna write this down, and I'm gonna say this. It just comes. It just from just... like it's natural. Yeah. Just it's not confidence. something I plan. Yeah. yeah you... Is it in the mood? What mood I'm in? If I'm in a good mood, I'll be talking good. If I'm in a bad mood, I'll be talking bad. It's just, I just don't feel you can fake these things. And it just comes natural to me to speak my mind. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I think a lot of fighters you see nowadays, they almost have these lines that they're rehearsing in the mirror and stuff like that. But you can tell that it's uh, it's a bit more authentic with you. And I think that lean, uh, makes it a little more entertaining, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's just more real. Instead of trying to be something that you're not, I'm just being me, uh, good and bad. Some people like it, some people don't. But I, I just want people to get the real. Just like when I'm fighting, I'm just I'm not trying to be anybody else when I'm in there. I'm, I'm being me, and I'm, I'm I have to be true true to myself. And that's the same when I'm talking, interviews or face off or whatever. I, I need to be true to myself and look myself in the eyes after. I don't want to be somebody else. I'm not because you can never be anybody else than yourself. So, yeah. So you're victorious against Lima. Um, ideally, what what would you like next? Is that another quick turnaround? Have you got an opponent in mind? Yeah, I want to fight uh, again this year. I want to fight uh, before the end of this year. I would like to fight Anton, the original opponent for me, uh, before he pulled out. Uh, so, yeah, that's a fight I would like to get and then, yeah, get get another fight in th- this year and see maybe even two more fights this year. Who knows? 
talk to me a little bit about what it's been like being champion. Um, has it added more fuel? Are you a bit, is a bit more pressure for you or is it just kind of as it, as it always has been? It's like it always has been. Uh, the difference is the five rounds. And I like that. Uh, I'm better fighter in five rounds. I, I'm, I'm that type of fighter who just, and I don't get tired. So for me to have the belt, it's, it's more about the five rounds. My last belt is a different belt than the first belt. I feel like the belt is representing the last fight. So the belt I have now represented the fight I had with, uh, with, with Gustavo. And the whole thing about that, that's how I look at that belt. Now it's a new belt. Now it's a new fight. So, yeah, I'm going in there to defend my title, but I'm actually going in there to win a new title, a new fight. Um, that's going to represent the new, new belt I'm getting, you know? I'm getting a new belt every fight, I feel yeah. like. I like that. It's an int- I've never heard that before. I like that. Um, but in that dual interview you were doing with uh, Felipe, um, you mentioned that you were committed to Octagon. Um, talk to me a little bit about the relationship you have with them and uh, what they're building over there. Yeah, so Octagon is, is like a, a crazy, crazy organization. Like, they do everything the right way. I've been in a lot of different organizations, uh, big organizations, and I must say, Octagon are the 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 ones that do doing right the whole the whole way and and the way I like this organization as well from the start I got there is is you can see these big organizations and they're all good and stuff when you're winning but it's also how they're treating the fighters when fighters are not winning mm-hmm. and I, I feel like Octagon has that respect of the fight and not respect of the winner. Uh, and that's another a thing I really love about Octagon because it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's about you putting on a fight. Always it, it matters what you win and lose, but uh, it's also about the fight you're bringing. And, 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 and the fans are very, very into that as well. Yeah. They uh, like I've... a good fight over there. Um, and I'm very invested in Octagon. This is my home. I don't, I don't see myself anywhere else in, than Octagon. Uh, where I feel like Lima maybe is just trying to use Octagon to get somewhere else. I've been there when I was younger. And that's also a big difference between me and him because he's going to come into my home. I know how it is to fight and, and and fighting to go somewhere else. But that's not where I am now. I'm fighting and this is my home. Octagon is my home. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to stay. This is where I want to. I want to grow with Octagon because Octagon has grown so much. I want to represent Octagon and and yeah. So that's a huge difference in this fight. Yeah. Um. Everyone I've spoken to, they've they're really happy with Octagon. They they seem to be happy the direction it's going. You know, the shows they're putting on. It's not just kind of um. You know, even bigger organizations they have these shows, but they don't have huge crowds. But Octagon, they're packing out. The the atmosphere seems amazing. Um. How far do you think they'll go? What would you see the future of Octagon being? They're going to be the biggest, 100%. 100%. They're going to be taking over Europe. uh, And it comes down just from, what am I going to say, like the way they're treating us fighters, everything like, everything is connected. So if I'm as a fighter getting treated good, feeling good, I'm going to perform better. When I'm performing better, I'm getting better fights. When I'm getting better fights, the crowd is going to get wilder. Uh, all these things comes down to just the staff that's working for Octagon. They're always helpful, always like, uh, yeah, just professional. Uh, you don't feel like a product when, you de- when you're when you there. You really feel like like taken care of and, and it just go all the way. And, and that's why you see the fans being so good and so invested because everybody is invested. Uh, the owners are so invested as well. They, they, they're very passionate about it. And, and that's why they're going to go the whole way because I feel for in Octagon, it's more than just money. It's a passion that, 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 that drives it. And um, yeah, the fans are invested like crazy. I've never experienced any, anything like it. Uh, I know a lot of guys who fight in the big organizations, UFC, Bellator, they've been seeing the crowd, seeing the f- fans, seeing how invested they are. And that's just, it's just amazing. You don't see it anywhere else. Um, I've had a lot of talks and shown a lot of things 
uh, videos and stuff from over there to my friends who's not been there and they said they cannot believe it it's like it's it's almost like what you think is going to happen when you become a professional fighter that's the show they're bringing brilliant i love i love to hear it it's always good to see uh different promotions uh moving forward so um Obviously, you're from you're from Denmark, but you're training at a Manchester top team. How long have you been there, and and what attracted you to uh, to the gym? So I've been doing my camps in England for the last seven years, six seven years, yeah, seven years. Uh, it just started with me having a good relation with the coach here, Carl Prince, and and when he was starting up, starting coaching, and he had some events in Denmark, and I just like clicked very good with him and uh, would come over here and train and and now it's Manchester top team that's built up and I'm getting built up as well so yeah now it's a big team we have a lot of guys fighting we have fully booked nights all the time like it's busy 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 but it's just it's not something that just happened I've been on like on this for the like last seven years and I've been with the build up and, and, and stuff and this gives me the going over here and, and train it just gives me that uncomfortableness that I need because it's easy to be comfortable when you are in the same gym spying the same people every single day you go in there seeing the same th- things and you don't come out of your comfort zone but fighting is being out of your comfort zone and that's why I, I like to go over here and do my sparring and do my training and it's not nice it's not nice at all. It's not like a holiday for me. You're not sleeping in your own bed. You you're getting up in the morning. It's the weather is shit over here every time, most of the time. Yeah, everything is gray, and it's just that grind, and 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 that's the same as when you're fighting. You're not used to going into a big arena with tens tens of thousands of people cheering for you. But I feel comfortable in the uncomfortable because I, I I seek that. And I always do that. I always, even when I'm in Holland training and when I was in Denmark, I always would travel to get the best rounds and get the best training in, no matter where I go. Because I, I'm not it's it's easy to be good when you're in a when you're in a safe zone. But it's about being good and being great when you're out of that safe zone. And that's what I'm always seeking for. That's why I'm going here, getting the best rounds and getting spying with some of the best people, some of the best guys in Europe, strikers, wrestlers. The, is this the MMA over here? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was having a look at the guys who train at a Manchester top team and it's uh, it's a it's a fair list. There's some, some incredibly talented fighters coming out from there. Um, I need to ask what obviously it's difficult being away from your family and your friends and but what's that kind of home comfort that you really miss maybe it's a, a meal or, or a place that you like to go back home it's mostly my son I miss when I'm out here and my family definitely but it's also giving fuel to the fire because me putting myself in in the spot where I'm not able to see my family it just gives me that grind and that that fire that that you need when you're when you're fighting like for me i could never go to thailand to do a fight camp because it would be too easy it would be too nice good weather good food warm i need that grind i need that little bit of horribleness uh because i need to i, I cannot be you have to be a happy fighter but i also need to be able to get that get get that grind out yeah. Um, so, and that's again, getting out of your comfort zone. It's not nice. You're waking up, you're sore. You look outside, the weather is shit. Um, you're going to go and spine with absolute killers who's used to train here every day. So this is their safe zone. So they're the best version of themselves. And you're fighting the best version of them when you're like maybe the second best of yourself. Um, like I always say, I love to train with people. I'd love to train two times a day with people who only train one times a day because they bring that fire. And I know when I when I can go with these guys and do my things, then I'm ready to fight anybody. It's a it's a brilliant mindset to have. Uh, last one for me. Obviously, you said that you're you you're happy with Octagon. You want to stay there. 
you know, you're obviously the reigning bantamweight champion. What more do you want to achieve in the promotion? Are you have you got your eyes set on anything else? Any names? Any belts? I think I need to just stay active in in, in bantamweight. I've only fought three times as a bantamweight, and then I had a boxing match. Uh, that was fun as well, but. There's so much more for me to achieve, achieve in, in bantamweight. I'm not looking to go in other weight classes. and I, w- I want to stay active in bantamweight. And and it's about making think now I'm going to fight in an outdoor arena. I've never tried that before. So that's another thing for me. It's a, it's another on a check on the checklist that I would like to try getting that fresh air when I'm fighting and, and, and feeling that really like gladiator style because that's how it's going to be with the fresh air. It's going to be in different environment. And, and that's what I love. So it's it's just about personal achievements, I feel. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Everything can happen. It's fighting. So make Brilliant. a lot of money. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, man. Thank you so much for your time. Um, best of luck. Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.